Hello and welcome to episode 2 of how to make a game in Unity. Today we're going to be tackling how to make a player jump, but with some caveats. Let's get started! Last episode, as a refresher, this is what we made using just the Unity editor and no programming. If you're interested in that episode, I'll put a link on the screen. Before we talk about syntax, I find that it's extremely helpful to actually write down the problem that you're trying to solve. On a basic level, when the player presses the spacebar, we want the ball to move upwards or along the y-axis. With that being said, let's create our first script in Unity. So let's navigate to our Assets folder and create a new folder specifically for our scripts. So right-click Create Folder and then name it Scripts. Now let's click in and create our first C-sharp script in Unity. So let's right-click Create and then New C-sharp Script. I'm going to be naming this Player Movement. With that being said, let's double click and open up Visual Studio. Opening this up, it can be a little daunting because Unity has pre-filled out some of our script for us already. It's also worth noting that Unity has a lot of built-in code that they've created for us to use. Couple of things going on here. Firstly, Unity provides us with these three packages to use in every single script. You'll also notice that whatever you named your script now becomes a public class and Unity provides us with two methods to start with, the start method and the update method. You'll also notice that it doesn't just say start, it says void start. Void just means that no value is returned. The start method just means on game start, do something. The update method means every frame, do something or check for something. Now, you won't always need these, so you can remove them and start over if you want to. However, for our game, we actually are going to use both, so let's put those right back in. First things first, we need to declare our first variable. And remember, variables are just containers that store data. Since we're trying to make the ball jump, we need to access the ball via code, and more specifically, access its rigid body. So we're going to type out private rigid body, and then I'm going to name it my player. Now don't let the word private throw you for a loop, it just means that it can only be accessed within this script. Now that we've set up our variable container, we need to tell Unity how to access that rigid body. So we're going to say my player equals get component and then rigid body. Remember that this script will be attached to our game object in the Unity editor, so Unity will know which rigid body to access based on that. And we're putting this under the start method because we only need Unity to access this once and on game start. And now that we've told Unity how to access our player, we want Unity to check for player inputs pretty much constantly, so we're going to use the update method for this. So this is where we're going to write the logic for if the player presses the spacebar, move upwards along the y-axis. A quick note about player inputs, if you go to edit and then project settings and navigate to the input manager in Unity, you can see that there are all of these inputs that are already set up for us. So if we try to access the spacebar in Unity, we're actually going to be trying to access this jump input right here, and you can see that the positive button is set to the spacebar automatically. You can play around and adjust these if you want to, but I feel like that's a whole other video, so let's get back into the script. Now that we know this, we can access this via code by using the input class. So if we type in if input.get button down and pass an argument of jump, if that happens, change the velocity of the player along the y-axis. So we'll say my player dot velocity and then we'll set a new vector3 value, and it's vector3 because we are in a 3D space. So because it's a vector3, we also need to pass three values, an x, a y, and a z value. So we don't want it to move along the x-axis at all. We want it to move some along the y-axis, and we don't want it to move any along the z-axis as well. You'll notice that I'm not passing just straight numbers in there. Each number has an F after it. That just means float. Floats are just floating points, so they are non-integer numbers. And here I'm just writing a log statement that says I'm pressing the spacebar. These can be really helpful because sometimes your if statement is set up properly and your logic is not, and sometimes it's the other way around. But let's save this file and head back on over to the Unity Editor and navigate in the hierarchy tab to our player game object. 
our player movement script has just been kind of existing in the void, so let's add that to our player game object by dragging and dropping. And now that we can see that our script has been attached, let's hit the play button and see if it works. Drum roll. And there she goes. Oh, up and away. So we can see that our script is working. However, you might notice that we probably don't want the ball to be able to jump if it hits the ground. So to do this, we need to perform a ground check. So if we go to the ground object, we can see that it doesn't have any tags attached. So let's create our own tag with the name of ground that we can check for. The finicky thing about tags that I wish Unity would fix is that once you create a tag, it doesn't automatically add it. So you have to go back in and make sure that that tag has been added to your game object. So let's head back on over to our player movement script and start to write that ground check. So firstly, we need to create another variable that's a boolean and I'm going to name it is on ground. Next, we'll want to tell Unity that when the game starts, the ball is not on the ground. So in the start method, we'll want to set is on ground equal to false. But that begs the question, how does Unity know when is on ground is equal to true? So this is where that tag comes in that we just wrote. So we're going to use the method on collision enter. And basically what we're saying is anytime the ball collides with the game object that is tagged as the ground, set is on ground equal to true. And while that's all fine and dandy, we still haven't connected this logic to our jump function. So we want to say if is on ground is equal to false, then the ball can jump if the space bar is pressed. Now let's make sure that those curly braces are in the right place and this should be good to go. Now let's save that file and go back to the Unity editor. If you'll notice, because I made that variable public, it's visible within the Unity editor now. And because we can see it in the editor, we can see if it's working or not. So on game start, we can see that it is false and now it's true. And despite my best efforts with the space bar, it won't let me jump after it hits the ground. And with that, that concludes this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me in the next episode where we will be tackling platform movement.